Okay, uh, so we're going to uh, carry on the work. I've been away, uh, been away for a week. That's why uh, not posting anything for a while. Back in harness now. So uh, going to remove the front wheel now, uh, so that we can take the front and the rear wheel down and get new tyres put on them. Because uh, don't forget, this is um, a ten-year-old bike. And although the tyres, sadly, are brand new, they've only got less than a thousand miles wear on them, uh, they're old. And in the, in the interest of safety, uh, we thought we would uh, replace the tyres. So relatively simple, he said, <laughs> now, uh, that to remove the front wheel. I say now because I'll probably be here in three hours' time still trying to get the damn thing out. Um, the main thing to do is you have to jack the, uh, the, the sort of the front up to get the wheel off the ground to get the uh, to get it out. They tend to sit on their front wheels a bit uh, on the stand. So what I've done is I've loosened the straps at the front and I've put straps on at the back of the bike and pulled that down because of course I haven't got a rear wheel at the moment. Uh, and so I pulled it down at the back, pulled uh, re released it a bit at the front. I've tightened it all back up again now. Uh, so that I've got a bit of clearance, the wheel's off the ground. Hopefully that's enough clearance, and we'll see. Mark three. So uh, we want to uh, remove the front wheel. Should be straightforward. We've got a nut on this side of the wheel spindle. It's a one-piece wheel spindle, unlike the rear. A nut on this side, I'm going to take that off. Got a pinch bolt here that holds the wheel spindle tight. When I've got the nut off that side, I'll release the pinch bolt. Obviously, otherwise the spindle might just spin. Then we pull the pinch bolt out, and allegedly our wheel will just come straight out towards us. <clears throat> right, okay, I've got the uh, Mega Zapper. Called this uh, impact driver one of the best things I ever bought. Probably the second best tool I ever bought after the bike lift. I've got the door open, by the way. I've been starting some of my bikes up. Uh, and so it's pretty smoky in here, so the door's open, it's throwing it down the rain, and that's what you can probably hear is all the cars going by. Okay, uh, so get this uh, nut off this side. There it goes. With a cordless impact driver. Hmm. No contest. Loosen the uh, pinch bolt on this side. It should, should now allow the wheel spindle to be withdrawn. Okay, we're just turning. Yeah, it's beginning to come out. When it will continue to come out, I'd be happy. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, if in doubt, get the Thor hammer. Why use subtlety when you can use a big mallet? I'm going to put the nut back on to protect the threads a bit. Well, obviously, I can't put it fully on. All right, and uh, just knock that through a bit. It doesn't want to come out. Ah, it's going now. They didn't want to come out. It's beginning to move now. I'm having to How much more have we got? A bit more. Right, I can have it on this side. Pinch bolt is definitely free, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Now that's the screw. I can't knock it without a drift any further, but if I have to use a drift, I will. Let's see if I can encourage it to spin out. No, not one note. Come on, spin out. No, it doesn't want to spin out. 
no, doesn't want to spin out at all. So I'm going to have to get a drift so I can drift it through. Right, I've got a drift, so if I can drift this through. As I was saying at the start, it should be easy. That doesn't mean it's tough to do. Yeah, it's, uh, it's out, it's virtually out on this side now. So it should be a bit easier to bring out now. Is it? Come on. You know you want to come out. Okay, you don't want to come out. No, nope, I have to carry on drifting it. There. That was tight, I don't know why. We'll find out. Wheel spindles out, we've got two spacers either side. Okay, we've got a plain spacer on the uh, right side, and we've got a shouldered spacer on the disc side, on the left side. That was chromed, and that's what's left of the chrome, not much. So we'll probably, yeah, probably put that in for re chroming as well. So that all the uh, extra thing, but I wouldn't normally worry. Let's have a look. Come out. Have I got enough height on this to get it out? Come on. Tell me you have. I bet you have enough. Come on. Come on. Come on. Bit more. Bit more. Bit more. Bit more. Oh, I just don't think I've quite got the height. I'm caught on the caliper now. Yeah. No, let's have a look what we've got. No, I'm caught on something that I should be caught on. Ah. Yeah. And now I probably can't get the damn thing back in. Right, I just need a little bit of extra height. I'm just caught on the caliper in two places and so it won't move. I can't get back in probably. So try and jiggle. So uh, what I do, loosen the caliper, probably the easiest thing. Okay so I've just removed the caliper from the bracket. So hopefully uh, our wheel will now just come out. There it comes. Hurrah! And there we go. Front wheel out. We'll inspect that in a minute. I shall probably loosely refit the caliper. Uh, before I do, I'm going to try and wedge the. Uh, I'm going to try and put a wedge in between the uh, brake pads to stop the uh, to stop it closing up on a softer bike and while the while the disc is out. And I've got a bit of wood, so I'm sure it's just going to be just too thick. Of course it is. There we go. So I've just put that bit of wood in between the pads. And uh, so that will sit there just to stop the pads uh, closing up while the, uh, while the cap is off the bike, uh, the disc is off the bike. In case I forget and press the, uh, press the brake lever, or as sometimes happens, they decide to slowly close up anyway, and then it's a pain trying to open them again. So I'm just going to loosely put the bolts back in, so I don't lose them. Okay, uh, so the wheel's off now, and uh, it's all okay. I've given the, the rims a bit of a clean. It's all stainless steel uh, rims and spokes and nipples, so it's all good. It's not corroded, which is great. Uh, the disc, there's a little bit of corrosion, you know, here and there, where it's just been standing. Obviously, the main part of the disc, that'll clear up 
when you start using the brake but I'll try and just clean up these bits around the, the bobbins it's a floating disc so um, you know these bobbins don't hold it tight so the disc can just uh, just got a little bit of movement to, to fit perfectly on the brake pads uh, it's got uh, or did have rather a polished hubs so uh, I'll uh, see if I can get in there and polish them back up a bit uh, I've checked the uh, uh, wheel bearings and obviously they're new as they should be and so it's all good um, I think one thing we'll do we we'll just have a quick check excuse me of the age of the tire see what we've got right so this is the date stamp let's see can we see it yeah so 4910 that's the date stamp on the tire so that tells you that it was made in week 49 of 2010 so this tire is now uh, almost exactly 12 years old because we're late November now. So this was made in early December 2010. So it is indeed 12 years old. So that's your date stamp, weeks and year, 4910. And that's why we're changing them because it's a sad, sad, because of course, look, look, that's virtually a brand new tire. Look, it's, you know, looks almost like it's just come, you know, just been fitted yesterday. But, you know, because it's old, what happens is they, they dry out. That's what happens. Uh, the rubber has a sort of natural lubricant in it, which uh, when you ride, it actually, and, and heats up, it actually encourages that lubricant to, that, uh, to come out. When I say lubricant, it's like sticky. So that, it's, uh, you know, it makes the tyre really sticky, and that's where you get your adhesion from. But if the tyre's cold, uh, it doesn't work so well, so that's why you see all those F1 cars, you know, weaving about to warm their tyres up. Or if the tyre's old, the lubricant or the you know, liquid that's in there slowly um, dries out. So even when the tyre gets hot, there's there's no uh, stickiness left to to, to come out. Um, and so that's why uh, that's why we need to change it. Okay, uh, yeah, caliper's looking good. Obviously, it's a good new up uprated. It's a Norville uprated caliper. A big, uh, that's the um, you, know, you, you might know this. Uh, so, this is the, the um, sort of mounting plate, it's a pretty hefty thing. And in my book, it is not, it's a bit unsightly. So, let's see if I can get to my bike on this. So, on my bike, what I did was I took it to the sort of engineering place and I got them to mill out. Oh, I can't get, I can't point. Uh, but if you can see the centre of that mounting plate, it's now got a big hole in it. Um, and, uh, yeah, because, you know, I think it just looks a lot better. It doesn't look quite as, as sort of slab-like as the original. And it works fine. I was a bit worried, obviously, about um, weakening it too much, but no, no problem at all there. Whereas if you compare it with the uh, original, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty solid. And, and so... So I just had the middle bit of this milled out on mine. And I think it looks a bit better. So it's amazing. We've uh, suddenly just taken two wheels out and that and taken the tank off. It looks like the bike's, you know, in, <laughs> inverted in pieces. But all we've done is, you know, exhaust off, wheels off, Z plates off, tank and side panels. Uh, but it's amazing. And the seat, of course, but it's amazing. It suddenly looks like the whole thing's uh, stripped down. But of course, we haven't done much so far. So, uh... Right, what I'm doing is, uh, the next job I'm doing is I'm going to see if I can save these um, uh, indicator stalks. I don't know how well you can see on this, but they're quite rusty. Um, but uh, I think I can save them. But uh, let's have a look. Yeah, come on, focus. I think I can save them. I don't know. Uh, because it's either that, because I'm going to the um, chrome places tomorrow. Uh, to take the bits down that do, definitely new, do need plating, so I'm going to check these. And if I if we can get away with it, if we can if I can polish them up, then we will. So I'll do that now. And if I can't get away with it, then we'll take the indicators off and get the stems down to the chromas at the same time as the bits and bobs. Okay, um, I've looked at these uh, stems, and uh, they're just a bit too bad to to polish up, and I don't want to leave the bike you know it's a beautiful bike and it's going to be top notch so you know when we've done it so um i'm going to uh i'm going to take these uh, stems off and get them re -chromed. 
But uh, as part of that, I've, I've removed the um, sort of tail light assembly so I can get the indicators off the rear. And I was just about to uh, unplug the um, the bullets, you know, for the indicators and that to, to get them off. When, um, you know, I've, I've, I've come to the bullets and, and everything's like uh, miswired. Uh, I mean, not miswired, but strange wiring, not necessarily miswired. So uh, I've got red going in there, which comes out to, uh, what's that? I, I can't work out how to put this thing on sort of manual focus. You know what I mean? Come on. Um, yeah, so red goes in, comes out of black and white, and then brown goes in and comes out as red. Now, um, that that's not kind of unusual because often these like tail assemblies, the actual wiring is a completely different colour to uh, our bike's wiring because red is always earth, brown is live. Um, and that's probably accounts for why the wiring is, uh, you know, it doesn't make sense. So I've taken some photos of it. Come on, focus, focus. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll check it, obviously, but I don't think it's miswired. As I say, it's probably these, these units, they're sort of new and they come with what, you know, whatever colour wiring they decide to put on, which doesn't match up with our wiring loom. So it's happily going along a certain colour and then changes. So it's always worth noting that. Uh, and one other thing, just while I remember, the um, the indicator wires, one, one is always green and white and one's green and red. But the new indicators, they're always just green. So both wires are green and obviously you just, when you wire it up, you just have to work out which one's which because that doesn't come out green. Well, I'll probably mark it up that. I'll put a white blob on that and a red blob on that. Um, but just, just worth noting that, you know, because these are all repro, these are all new, so they don't have the same wiring on that would have been on originally. So, you know, I, I've marked it, I've taken photos of all this because I'm going to unplug it all now, try and make sure I get it back in the right way.